Hey, yo, recently Fat Joe made some comments that was obviously about that interview I did with Charlie Rock. And all I got to say about that is imagine we did that series. I have called Trinity. And we bring it back to the Bronx in the 80s in New York when it was real. You heard? It's just a thought, baby. Leave a comment, Gen Pop. Let me know what you think about that. And yo, if you need that promo, text me right now. You heard? Don't even wait till the episode is over. Just text me right now. Let me know what you need because my prices are spectacular for the type of exposure you going to get on this channel. Imagine if this was your ad right now. How many people you think is seeing this right now and listening to me right now? You heard? Holla at me for them collabs too. My collab and promo together price. It's nice. It's nice. Get at me. One thing I can say about Sean Wood Funny, and, and, and right now I think about it, it was crazy, but the nigga told me straight up when he gave me my papers on my office shit, he said, Yo, blood, if you don't know your office shit, I'll personally eat your food. Right, my sister, right in front of me, he told me that. He told me, and I mean, I didn't take it as no pussy bitch shit. I took it as, nigga, this for real. We doing this shit like this, how we move it. Uh, I was born in Crown Heights, you know what I mean? Crown and Utica. Feel me, 1985. Feel me, kind of, I mean, mid 90s crack era. My people ain't come from no, like, you know what I mean? You know, everybody got the hood niggas with the story, like, yo, oh, my mom just did drugs, my dad jail. Nah, my people was in that. They was Haitian, so they wasn't really mixing all that. You feel me? We seen, looking through the window, I seen a couple of hood niggas. I heard the shit, decepts, but we ain't really run with that. You feel me? I went to school in like uh, 189. Rutland and Sutter, that was the train station there. So we got exposed to Brownsville real early. Real early, nigga like me got, got put on to some shit. Show me fighting, regular shit. Dad died, regular shit, regular hoodlum shit. You know what I mean? Most niggas don't realize, like, as young dudes, we kind of infatuated with the music. The music is what gets us. We see the bandanas, the baggy jeans, the fashion. I even got a time where uh, my mother was supposed to give me a. Uh, a leather jacket, she was gonna give me an Averex. The Streets is Watching DVD came out, you know, the shit with her Jay-Z. I told her I wanted that, so she said, you have to make a sacrifice. I said, all right, I want that. She got me a Streets is Watching DVD and bought me a South Pole leather jacket. If you know <laughs> South Pole, yeah, it, it was ugly. It was ugly, maybe blue South Pole, I remember it, clear as day. It, 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 was, it was rough, it was rough, but I, I, made it, I made it look good. I take it off and I got to school, you feel me, tucked it up. Feel me kind of move like that <laughs> so boom after that i started running away i started running with some brownsville niggas uh um it was repping a little click on nfo no fear ones feel me i ran away from home at like about 11. so from then on i was exposed are you right ran now, away for what you ran away from home for though <clears throat> kind of wild story my mom's after my pops died my pop died of cancer i literally watched him like deteriorate in front of me but you know, I'm young though, I'm like 9, 10, so we not really understand, we just think, all right, maybe he's just a little sick. You feel me? So I'm not understanding that. My mom bought me a Super Nintendo. My mom hates video games. She bought me a Super Nintendo, so I guess that was just kind of throw us off with me and my little sister, she's five years younger. Boom, we in the house in uh, Crown Heights on Crown and Utica. She fucking with some dudes, a bus driver, nigga named Bob. I mean, nigga, it, it was kind of weird. Come home every day at five o'clock, me and my sister do weird shit in the house play fake baseball, bowling, you know what I mean? Do kid shit, you know what I mean? I treated her like she was a boy. I, I really wanted a brother, but I love her to death. So I guess in the living room, there was a TV. My birthday, August 11, 1985. The TV got my exact birthday on the back of it. So I remember one day I hit my mother at work. I'm like, yo, can I put the TV in my room? It's in the living room, nobody using it. She said, yeah. So I'm over here like, all right, cool. So I take the TV, put it in my room. Nigga Bob comes off the school bus right at five. He's like, where the TV at? I'm like, you was in my room. He like, why? Well, I said, my mom said I forget it. He said, no, she didn't. I'm like, yo, I'm telling you, she did. So I'm like about, 
like 11 right there, about 11. Nigga puts his hands on me. Boom, whoop, whoop. I mean, I'm a little nigga. So even though I'm fighting niggas in school, he's still a grown man. Whoop, 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 whoop. He does that and leaves. I'm like, yo, and by that time, I was already cutting school already. I was already, you know what I mean? My mother, she worked hard, so she couldn't really focus on it. So I was already dabbling in the school, in the streets and all that. You know what I mean? Hanging around with the older niggas that used to chill around. So me, a bunch of niggas from the village used to come up there and, and kind of post up, talking to the young bitches. Now I think about it, it was kind of a little uh, Kelly-ish, but I ain't my business. They, they, they did what they did. I mean, the drinks was going with it, they was cool with it. So I remember it, and I'm like, yo, shit, I'm going. My mom just bought me a pair of um, the Gary Payton zip-up joints, white and black shits. I, I remember that clear as day. So I'm like, yo, once he left, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm cool with this shit. I'm going, I'm going home. I'm getting up out of here. I, I had a book bag. I ain't grabbed no clothes. I ain't grabbed no toothbrush, no soap. I grabbed the Super Nintendo, and she got me. I put it in the backpack, and I put a hoodie on and walked out. So boom, I don't know where I'm going. I'm looking for the older niggas that I used to rock with. So boom, I'm taking a walk. I go up, you know where Rockaway Boulevard at, right? Mm-hmm. In East New York, so that's where my school's at, PS 189. I walk to the school, don't see nobody. It's getting cold outside. I look, I said, shit, I'm about to turn around. I look across the street, I see one of the niggas that used to, uh, I used to just hang around the school. Nigga, uh, from NFL, like it's a little click I was with. Nigga named DeLong, pause. I don't know. That, that shit weird now I think about it. You feel me? But I don't know. He on the other side of the street. It's a big, like, uh, um, intersection street with four, four streets going across. So it's a big street. And I see him. I got the whole shit, my backpack on. And I'm like, yo, yo. Boy, turn around, look at me. He like, yo, what you doing? He told me to come across. I run across the street like a little kid. Told me, boom, he like, what you doing? I'm like, yo, tell him the story. They put their hands on me. He like, yo, come with us. He with one other nigga. We go to, um, I want to say, I want to say either it was, uh, it was a Tompkins. It might have been Tompkins, but whatever project it was, whatever low projects it was. So I mean, these niggas ain't got no, I'm thinking these niggas is the big homies. These niggas ain't got no home. These niggas is bum niggas, but I don't know. We go into project building. They smoking BDs at the time. I know you remember the BDs. Yeah, I was just talking about those the other day on live. Smoking the BDs. They had the weed too, but I was, even though I was, like I said, 11 years old, I was still kind of like weed. I'm Haitian parents. They, they call everything crack. So weed is crack. Coke is crack. Heroin is crack. Everything that's a drug is crack. So I ain't really want to fuck with the weed. I hit the BDs, lungs coughing, boom. We get in the staircase. They're like, yo, you want to get down with the NFO shit? I'm like, cool. Boom. Fight one nigga. Get down with him. I fight the other, the long nigga. He start kicking, trying to stomp me out. Oh boy, like, yo, chill, chill. Like, yo, you know, it's a kid. So they like, yo, they fuck with me because they realized I was ready to fight. I ain't had no choice. I wasn't going back home. I'm already, in, I'm already in the Ville. You feel me? I already took my backpack. And out of that whole thing, the coldest part about it was that when I was walking out, like I said, my sister's five years younger. And she was like, uh, she's probably about six, seven. And she was like, yo, Jerry, where you going? I remember her face. And I was just like, I can't do it. And that was a the biggest hurt to me because I felt like I left her. You know I mean? I apologized later on, but that was the biggest hurt I ever got. Like, yo, this man put his hands on me, and I was right. It would have been any other situation if I wasn't right. But I was right. She said, I could get that TV. I was right. So, boom, we in the Ville. These niggas ain't got no home. We sleeping in projects. I, I, I could probably have been in about three different projects. These niggas, we sleeping on the roof. So, I'm already like, man, I'm not catching. I'm just like, yo, these are my homies. These are the big homies. Boom, we rocking the move, going around all, all through Brownsville. These niggas stealing fruits and shit, doing mad weirdo. Like I said, at the time, I didn't recognize it. So, boom. Go, I go to sleep. I'm sleeping on the roof. Like, on the roof, these niggas. These niggas on the roof. I sleep on the roof. One, I did it for like two days. One morning, I wake up. Super Nintendo gone. Boom. He like, yo, I don't know what happened. Da, 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 da. I'm like, shit. All right, cool. I took it as a loss. I wasn't playing. I was gonna plug it in into the rooftop. I was gonna plug it into some shit. These niggas ain't had no choice for me to go. Ain't even like they had bitches to be like. They just like, yo, we over here, we over here, we over here. So boom, that joint happened. We go by Western Beef. I don't know. I don't know what street that's. On. I don't know what street. You know the Western Beef right there in the Ville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go there. Yeah, these these niggas go through the back part, steal some juice. The owner grab me, grab me to the side, take a picture of me. Boom. Now I'm, now I'm a thief. Now I'm, I feel like I'm a no thief. One of the streets and shit, but it's cool. I'm walking one day, Bob drives a bus, grabbed me up, hopped out on me, grabbed me, boom. 
it bring me back police and shit, missing report. It like, oh, my mom, she's nervous. Me, in my mind, I don't got a taste of the street already. I'm not scared anymore. You feel me? You know, as, as a parent, they always try to tell you, don't run around. It's this at night. It's this at night. I, I was I was open. I realized, yo, I can go here. I can go here. When the lights go dark and the street lights on, I'm comfortable. So I guess my mom kind of peeped, peeped that. So now I'm in eighth grade now. I'm cutting school all day now. I ain't giving a fuck. She's scared to hit me now. Cause police don't already got involved. How so long? Was, how long you said you was you was out the house for? I ran away from home for like two weeks. Mm. Probably like probably like, yeah, in about two weeks. It wasn't no long shit. You feel me? Like stealing boxes. She was weird. It was some real. When I think two about weeks, it, that was some two, fun. two weeks is a long time for an eleven year old kid, though. It, it is, bro. It is. It really is. It really exposed to shit. Not being. You feel me? Seeing niggas with guns. It's the first time I shot a desert. Fucking, I shot it in front of the, the top of the roof. Fell down the stairs. Fucked up my arm. I don't know if my shit was dislocated. You feel me? But what you mean, niggas it, that you it, was with or sleeping on the roof? They had a desert. They had a desert. Let me burn it. Let me hit the desert. Boom! Ears ringing for about three hours. And how old was the was, dudes you said again? Like how much older than you? They had to be about fifteen, kind of, because they was coming to the to, to my junior. My, my my school went from kindergarten to uh, eighth grade, so you got chicks in there that's like 13, 12, 13. So they had to be about sixteen, maybe seventeen. And where you said they six. was from in the Ville? I don't know where they was from. We went to so many projects, bro. I I couldn't even tell you, to be honest with you. They, every project we went to, they knew niggas. And all of them so old niggas was like homeless too? Yeah, yeah. No, two of them was homeless. The other niggas, they was doing their shit. Them niggas, I thought them niggas was down with the, uh, the polo shit. Because one nigga used to always come to the school, you feel me, with mad polo on. I even hit the nigga on Instagram, the light-skinned nigga. I thought he was with the low lives and shit. He was like, nah, it wasn't him. But I don't know. He might have been him. And he was like, yo, I ain't getting myself in that shit. But one nigga that was fresh, he was fucking with the little bitches. He was cool. But the niggas I was with, nah, they was bummed. It was, it was it was super bummed. I, I, I peeped the old vibe now, like I said now. They, but to me at the time, they, these are big homies. They they bigger, they taller, they go in here, they know people here. What up, what up? And I can hear people saying like, yo, what y'all doing with this kid? You feel me? I can hear it like, you feel me? I can hear people like, you know what I mean? Because I'm still standoffish. I'm, it's not like I'm out in the hood and I'm just like, oh, what up, what up? I'm kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? Just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm fucking loving right away from home. You know, I've never been exposed to that. So boom, when the nigga Bob catch me back, I go back home. My mom, she plead with me, Jerry, don't ever do that again, please. Uh, uh, cool. We go to um, she buy a house in Canarsie. We move to Canarsie. When I go to Canarsie, boom, it, it was even more open. There's houses. You feel me? Nigga next door to me is a a, a psych bike big homie. Them GSC nigga. Before they was GS9, they was GSC. Their big homie was next door. Nigga named Basal. He's have a boy named uh. Uh, a, a cypher used to come over there. You feel me? So these are all older, older crib niggas. So I'm seeing them niggas. I'm getting in tune with that. Me and my little niggas, we start on, on that block. Canarsie, I already been in the gang already. So I'm already embraced with the gang life. They banging Haitian Mafia. So I jump right in. Banging Haitian Mafia. I'm cutting school, cutting school, cutting school. Truancy picking you up, truancy picking you up, truancy picking you up over and over. Boom, I get um I get like too many truancies, they bring me to some like court shit, some like family court. And this is kind of the moment where everything kind of turned left because when they brought me to court and the judge, I remember I remember it clear as day. Cause they talking to my mother, they like, and my mother said, she's like, I don't know what to do with him. If y'all can help me, y'all take him. Because he's not listening to me. Woo-woo. When she said that, you already know that's ACS. Once the state get involved, it's a whole different world. That's a whole different world. So now they take me, I, I go, um, they send me some shit in Atlantic. I do the, uh, uh, Spofford, I hit Spofford, hit that shit. So now I'm in the system now. I mean, I'm in, I'm in group homes. I'm taking the train back from group homes, going back to Canarsie, I will ride. After a while, I say, yo, fuck that. I'm gonna just fuck with the hood I'm at. I'm fucking with Gowanas. They had the boys twinning them out there, fucking with it. I'm cool, still gang banging. First day inside the group home, a nigga casting over from Yonkers, and niggas like, yo, if you want to get down, we got some shit called D Block. You got to get down or lay down. I hook right off. They ain't scared to swing. Got right off. They jumped the niggas. So now D Block. I went from NFO, Haitian Mafia, now D Block. So boom, this is before, this is right around the time when the blood wave was hit. I know you remember that around, blood started in 93, but around uh, around like 95, 95, 96, that's when 
everybody's getting wearing, wearing red. They were scared of niggas getting cut. I was infatuated by this shit. I ain't gonna front. It was, it was like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. They scared of the bloods. So boom, I start rocking with the blood movie now. That's going bigger and bigger and bigger. All of a sudden, they hit me up one day when I'm in Brooklyn by Atlantic. They said, you going to the Bronx to another group home. So now I'm like, shit, you feel me? I'm a Brooklyn baby. I, ain't, I don't know nothing about uptown. I don't know nothing about all these other boroughs. I know Brooklyn. So no key, like, you feel me? I'm about, what's I'm about 14, yeah, 14 at the time, 14, 15. I'm kind of nervous. I'm like, shit, I'm, ah. And he's like, yo, you want to do what you do. You can't run away, nigga. You, you already here. They sent me to the Bronx. I'm on 166 and Morris. I took that shit to like a fish to water. They would love me out there. I'm playing ball. They say, oh, the Brooklyn nigga, boom. Boom, bloody bleak is my name now. I'm fucking with the homies. So now I'm full out of the group home. They tell you shit. They just telling you, hey, make sure you're back at this time. That's all they telling you. Then they transferred me to a high school named Walton High. Now I'm super gangbanging. Because now I feel privileged. I'm like, I'm a Brooklyn nigga in the Bronx. Nigga, we grimy. Niggas know Brooklyn for grimy shit. That's what we know for. You know Harlem for fresh shit. You know Bronx for, for hustling Queens. I ain't never really rock with Queens like that. I ain't never really been my vibe. So now I'm super gang banging. I'm fucking with this shit. Boom. I'm over there. I'm, I'm stabilized. They moved me to another group home. This is where this group home they moved me was in Force and McKinley. Now, that's the first time where I ever seen bloods that were BKCK. I ain't never seen, I never heard no shit like that before. This is the time where I'm hearing bloods banging on bloods, cutting bloods, they cutting cribs. I took like a fish to water. I'm, I'm, now I'm, I'm payback. I'm payback to 90. That's where that 1090 shit came from. Them niggas repping that shit now, these young boys, but that shit started in Forrest and McKinley Project in the Bronx. 1090. Payback, Peter Roll, all you bitch ass Crypto Kings. You feel me? That's what that stands for. So niggas is banging on anything. So boom, I'm into that life right now. I got a grip. Now I got a grip. Now I got a uh, tutu llama. Never forget that. I had a deuce deuce llama. Now I'm feeling like the man now. I ain't never busted. I ain't never did no wild shit, but I got it. No matter what, I got it. Boom, I start um, fucking with bitches in school. They like, you come to Jackson Ave. Ooh, that's where we at. So boom, I go to Jackson Ave. They kind of looking at me funny, like, who this weird dude? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, boom, I'm fucking with the bitches. One of the niggas from Forest, he see the bitch I'm with one day. He like, yo, hook me up with her. So we walk across from Forest Projects to Jackson, uh, uh, Jackson St. Mary's. That's on the other side, about eight blocks different. He see some Spanish nigga. He know the nigga, I ain't gonna put the nigga name out there. He like, yo, that's my homie. They selling dope, woo, 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 woo. I'm like, word, okay, okay. So now I'm on Jackson Ave, I'm fucking with bitches. There's some nigga name out there named uh, uh, Eddie and shit, he moving dope. He got a baby mom, one day I see the baby mom, she's like, yo, I just found this right here in the, uh, uh, over here. Now I think about it, she took a nigga stash. She like, yo, I just found it, she had some boulders. Boulders, a stack of boulders. So she give me this shit, she's like, you think you could do something? I'm like, yo, I don't know. Them shits was 50 piece now that I know later on I found out I was selling them shits for $10, 20 mm. So boom, I got a taste of that shit. Boom, I got a, I made a cool little $300. I'm like, damn, this kind of this kind of all right right now. So I, I asked the homie, I said, yo, what's up with the Spanish niggas? Tell them niggas, what's up? I go over there to Jackson Ave right now, talk to the Spanish dudes. They looking at me like, yo, niggas don't just randomly come from other other projects like, yo, I want to hustle. He like, my homie vouched for me like, nah, he good, but you know what I mean? You know, Force and McKinley, they, they 1090, they think giving out packs. They on some real territorial. And that's the first time we ever seen 10, 20 niggas on one strip, everybody eating. You feel me? You know, I, where I was from, Canarsie, niggas got a little couple of hustling niggas, but not never seen 10, 10 niggas on one block. Yo, 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 I got that. Ooh, ooh. I said, oh, okay. So I start fucking with the Puerto Rican niggas. They show me love. You feel me? They giving me packs, flipping off the packs, getting the packs. When I'm in the hood over there, I can tell the hood niggas in uh, St. Mary's, they kind of wary about me. They looking like, yo, where this nigga come from another project out here eating? But little did I know, the niggas I was getting money with, it was hitters. They just burnt the nigga probably like three months before that. So they, they didn't want to really fuck with me because it's like, he with them. So boom, I start thinking, I'm like, all right, cool. I got to find my way in. I go to the basketball court right there on uh, Jackson Ave. And the niggas know me. They know Bleak, they know Jay, they know me. I take my old basketball trophies, I bring them to the court, and I start playing with the little kids. Whoever can make 10 free throws, boom. Whoever can make 10 three-pointers, I give them a trophy. I'm giving my my personal trophies. You feel me? So that was how I slid in. Now the youth fucking with me. So 
So I'm hustling, boom, I'm getting money. I'm super big blood. I'm thinking I'm this. I'm ready to eat a nigga food, woo, 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 out of his coffer. Never hit the island yet. I get one charge. That's when I had the sidekick. I had some dope inside the sidekick case. All these cats were with the dope. I hit him with the, nah, that's my shit. I've been struggling. I'm in a group home. I'm over here getting high, boom. They, they, they rock with it. I get a quick little possession, boom, they slide me out. I catch another charge again, probably like uh, two weeks later. When I catch that charge, they're like, nah, we know you. We know you. Book me. Now I got a possession with intent to sell. So now I'm kind of a little wary right now. You show me. I can't really get caught up in no. I'm still in the group on though. So they they like, yo, you catch the charges in here. You feel me? It's kind of weird. They, they kind of on their last throw with me. I got about two, three niggas on that side of Jackson. I don't turn blood under me. Nah, bro, I, like I said, I thought I was 10 star general. So, boom, one of my homies, my little nigga Jimmy, he was under me. I like the nigga Jimmy because Jimmy was about 14. I'm about 16. He had a buck 50 on his face. Clean buck 50. A pretty boy nigga. Smooth hair. And Jimmy took a liking to me. I, I, I turned him blood into me. He got locked up for some shit. He came home. I gave him some Tim's. This is my nigga. And the one thing that always amazed me about Jimmy was that when Jimmy was 14, he kept saying, yo, bleak. I can't wait till I turn 16 because I want to go to the island and get the nigga that cut me. And he was adamant on that. He was adamant. I mean, the nigga that cut him, from that shit over with now, nigga named Pumpkin from uh, 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 Court. The niggas know who that is. It's all, that shit done with now, though. But he kept telling me. And the nigga that cut him was an older nigga. He ran into the nigga on a scooter and got mad at him. He just scooter out of the spot. So I was already looking like the nigga that cut him must have been a savage. And he had a clean, I mean, a nice buck fit. He just always told me, always he said, man, Bleak, I'm telling you. The moment I go to the island, I'm going to eat this thing. I'm going to kill this nigga. Woo, woo, woo. Because Pumpkin was locked up at the time for some miscellaneous shit. You feel me? So, boom, we running through the hood. Give me, that's my homie. He a wild one. But that's why I love the nigga attitude. He, he had no no if, ands, or buts going. But if he anything with me, he moving. So, boom, I got some tension with niggas where I'm staying at in uh, Fort and McKinley over Jimmy. I'm in the spot one day, chilling. You feel me? I had a uh, dead some blood nigga off of... Off of uh, 380. I'm like, yo, I need that for some shit. The shit ain't had no clip or one bullet in the head. So all I kept seeing to myself is that if I gotta let it go, I got one shot in this. So boom, I got two grips now. I got the 380 and I got a 22 llama. So boom, I'm in the spot chilling. You feel me? Me and Jimmy done had rumbles already. Jimmy, uh, uh, some nigga hit me up like, Jimmy, you just got cut. Or oh, niggas tried to cut him, they cut him his arm. They ain't catch him. So boom. Boom, boom. I'm like, all right, cool. I see, I hit up Jimmy. He's like, oh, all right, this is what happened. So now uh, I know I got tension with niggas in my hood. So now I'm walking back. It's a seven seven block walk from that hood to that hood. So I'm hustling dope over here and I'm walking back to the group home and the other projects. So I see one of the niggas that supposedly was there when they got cut. He got a private school uniform on. I'm like, damn, I see him. He walking behind me, he just got off school. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm gonna press this nigga. Fuck that. And how old is you is at this time again? I'm 16, 16, 17 about that. All right. So boom, I see the boy. When I see the boy, we walk to the projects. I'm like, yo, what's up? You the man that that uh that uh out with the homie? He got private school uniform on, so I'm thinking, oh, this is an easy win in my head. The boy flips his book bag around and pulls out the uh, you know when you go to the deli, they got that the, the big uh ham and they got that big knife to cut it, the big joint. He pulls one of those joints out, I pull out my little box to the shit, and I'm I'm not really trying to get close to this shit. This nigga I got crazy reach. He slashed me on, the, on my chest, boom. Some homies come around, they stop the fight. I go back to uh, Jackson, I tell the homie Jimmy what happened. We go back to the projects, we stand in the projects, we went there about 12 o'clock at night, we stand in the staircase till about seven in the morning, by the nigga apartment. You feel me? Ain't incriminating myself, cause nothing happened, this shit was done. So we both got two grips, and we sitting there about on the nigga floor in the staircase, waiting all night, all night, dozing off, waiting all night, mad cigarette buds. Now nah, I think about it, all cigarette butts, DNA, I would've got booked anyway. N the nigga never came out the apartment, the nigga's sister come out, the homie Jimmy like, yo, I'm about to burn her. I'm like, nigga, no, this, it don't work like that. That ain't, that ain't how, how we move. We ain't gonna do shit like that. Boom, running around, now running around, I get caught with the grip. I get caught with the grip. Now I already know what it is, ain't no, there's no juvenile shit. You're going to Rikers Island, this is the pistol, you're going to the Rikers Island. So I'm already in blood mode. One thing I always remembered was that I remember niggas to say when I got through the shit in the book that they was like, yo, if you want to go to a popping building, that's a uh, 
C95, you got to tell them you do hair on. You feel me? Any nigga that do the island, you know, they know that. They, anybody that do hair on, they going to send you to C95 because they got the methadones in it. They say all the weed is in there, all the cigarettes, everything's in there. So I remember when I'm going through the bookers and the CO lady like, yo, you got any drug habits, woo woo? I'm like, yeah, I smoke weed, cigarettes, and uh, um, heroin. I said, this shit mad fast. So she looked at me like, she like, excuse me? I said, uh, weed, cigarettes, and uh, heroin. She like, uh, okay, boom. So I go to C95 and shit. So I'm in C95. When I go to C95, I'm in there, I'm in there. I run into the homie, um, I came in there, I was came in there with some some little jewels on me, some little light shit. I don't know if you ever heard of the nigga classic. You talking about the kid who got the kid who was in the check scam shit and all of that? Yes, yes, sir. Classic, yeah. yes. Yeah. Classic blood. I was with he was he was in the bullpen, came with me and shot 120. I know you heard of shot 120. Yeah. So them two in there, they in there like they pressing the whole bullpen. They going crazy, so I'm just kind of posted up. I got a watch and chain on. I make eye contact with Shaw 120. So I see him, I see his eyes glisten like, oh, we got one. So he walk over, and my mentality is I'm not I'm not going for it. You know, you know niggas say, yo, what, what shoes you wear? What size shoes you wear? Your size, pop off. That was the mentality they always trained us already with. So when a nigga come up next to me, he like, yo, what's up? He like, yo, you, you, it's the first time I'm locked up. I'm like, you said blood? When I say blood, he like, oh, oh, you blood? His whole attitude changed. You feel me? He got, he got kind of what I mean. And I respected that. It was, it wasn't like, oh, I'm still gonna try to be a predator. He was like, oh, it's good. He chopped it up. He chopped it up. He introduced me to Classic. I didn't know at the time Classic used to be Crip, and then he turned Blood. Shawn went twin and gave him a whole hood assassin mill against him. So when I find out later on, I realized how much weight he had because at that time on the island you couldn't say Crip. It was, it was rolling you out. They moving you, they moving you out the way, out the way ASAP, ASAP. They moving you out the way. So I'm talking to the nigga Shawn with 20, and like I said, we young niggas, we look up to the older blood niggas. You hear stories about shit. These niggas were like gods to us. You know what I mean? You, you hear about big is. You hear about you feel me? You hear about you hear I me? Mean? Even on China Bridge, you hear about niggas like that. You hear about niggas eating niggas food. So he's fucking with me, and he like yo um. We got a movement going on. We doing the Miller movement. I, 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 I'm feeling how you came. Woo, woo, woo. I'm like, yo, I, I'm gonna sleep on it. I'm, I'll let you know. Boom. I realized the nigga was was more important than I thought when I saw a captain walk to the gate. She called the nigga over, called him by his name. She's like, yo, you good? I, I, everything good? You in the building right now? Ain't gonna be no, nothing funny going on, right? He like, nah, I'm cool, man. Da 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 da. da. I'm sitting there, I'm watching this. The nigga turn around and come to me. He like, yeah, blood, that's how you do it. And it's the first time I ever seen a nigga have a blade in his tongue and slip it out while talking. And he took it out right, right after he spoke to the captain. Like, yeah, yeah, that's how you got to do it, homie. Woo-woo. So now, as a young nigga, I'm like, damn, this nigga's super blood. You feel me? Like, this nigga got powers and shit. He, he got the captain making sure he's good. So I, I fell into the, I, I was like, yo, you know what? I'm fucking with the movement. I'm going to holler at you. Ah, 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 ah. Later on, I come to find out. A lot of niggas wasn't fucking with him because I heard he tried to take over the shit. I ain't give a fuck. Niggas showed me respect and love. I fucked with him. Boom, he rocking with me. He rocking with me. Seeing how I'm moving on the island. Seeing how I'm moving. He give me all the paper. He like, yo, he gonna make me three-star general. Boom, I'm taking it. I'm running with it. Now, oh, he couldn't tell me shit. Boom. I get released. When I come home, I'm, I'm pushing that movement. I can't go back to selling dope. I can't do that no more. It was a little chick in the hood. I ain't gonna say her name, but she was she was a little slut bucket. Woo, woo, you know what I mean? But she was on me. I'm like, yo, you know what? You know when I was younger, everybody used to say, yo, your mother work on 42nd Street. Your mother's on 42nd Street, so you know that's where the hookers was at. So I came to her one day. I bought a little bottle of uh, uh, ENJ. I had like two blunts. I said, yo, you wanna come with me? I'm gonna try to make some 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 cool movement shit. She she didn't care what I said. She was riding with me, whatever. So drinks, weed. She was rocking with me. I tell the homie Jimmy, come with me down down near the uh, Manhattan. I don't know nothing about no paper shit. I don't know nothing about that. So boom, we take the fucking train, take the train all the way down to 40 Deuce. I'm over here now that I know, like, I've been in the pimp game for like 10 years. I'm done now, but when I was in it 10 years strong, uh, I was Mexican pimping the bitch. I was standing right next to her, like I was babysitting her. And I remember um, we out there, we set her off, and a uh, nigga come out with a Cadillac with a purple mink on. Never forget it, nigga name was Ohio. Start, he starts uh, talking, to, talking to the bitch. I'm thinking he's trying to get some money, so I'm standing back. 
So boom, I'm sitting back. She, she come up again. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I don't know. You was talking about, about make money. I said, listen, we trying to just get some money. You know what I mean? Fifty dollars, thirty dollars, whatever. Woo, woo, woo. The nigga pull back around again. The, uh, the Cadillac and his bitches come up with some Ben shit. He walked to me. He like, yo, you uh, this your bitch? She was standing right there. I, I never called her no bitch. When he said that, she just went with the flow. So I'm sitting here like, whoa, you just took that? Okay. He like, yeah, the bitch out of pocket. Woo, woo, he giving me game. He like, you got to check this bitch, man. He pulled me to the side. Like, you got to gotta really let this bitch talk. I could have took the bitch. Ah, 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 ah. So I'm with Jimmy and all that. When the nigga walk up, the nigga Jimmy like, yo, let's rob this nigga. You feel me? He on some just straight, like, yo, let's get this nigga. This nigga got the shit. I'm like, yo, you know what? I like this pimp and shit. I like the, the way he came. I like the gentleman vibe of it. So I go to the uh to the chick. I'm like, yo, you can't be doing shit like that. Nigga Jimmy just straight backhand a whoop. Smacks him crazy. So now we over here sharing a bitch technically. You feel me? Boom. That gets going. She ended up fucking with me for like several, several years. So that's neither here nor there. The whole time I'm on the run for that pistol case. You feel me? I never went back after that. You feel me? You know, I got I got went to the island, got the OR come back. You feel me? He gave me a uh uh, was a wobbler. I don't know if they still do that. You know, we do the wobbler, the uh, misdemeanor stash felony. But if you do this, you get still misdemeanor shit. Yeah, but let me ask you right quick. What that? What he said? The chick was out of pocket for like just talking to him too much. Talking to him because he's a pimp. This is my bitch. Like I said, I'm stomped down. Like any peeps that's from New York in that era, they know uh, Emperor Caesar, New York Caesar. Some niggas call me Young Caesar because I was one of the youngest niggas out there. As as a bitch, this is your claim. She represents you. She has no business talking to nobody but another pimp, but another, excuse me, but a trick and a hoe. Anything else is out of pocket. You feel me? You can, you charge bitches for that. You feel me? For him talking to her, he had options where he could have said, you feel me, I'll put the bitch on charge. She got to make me $500 or I can't release the bitch. Or he could have just took the bitch and went to another state. I wouldn't know shit. You feel me? It's a, it's a lot of slithery shit I learned about the pimp game growing up through that. But he kept it real with me. He's like, yo, I don't want the bitch. But you gotta really, really tell you like she's a pretty little bitch, she's a pretty, pretty red bone joint. You feel me? He's like, if she's a nice joint, man, you gotta let her know. So I was infatuated when he's telling me this. You feel me? And then Jimmy just wanna he smack the bitch, the bitch ears ringing, ah, he's doing all type of gangbanging shit. But I took I took a liking to it because now when I went to 42nd Street before, I just see people outside. Now I'm seeing the eyes, I'm like, oh, this is a hoe. Oh, that's a hoe. Oh, that's a pimp right there. So I'm catching on, I'm putting two and two together. So I took it like I'm coming back again, but without him. So boom, when we go back, I take the bitch back the next night without her. The first thing the bitch caught was for seventy dollars. She went to like, you know, in Manhattan, how they got the little staircases, like you know, uh, look, it'd be a house with the little staircase that go down to the little little part. Mm-hmm. Bitch did a little date with a Mexican for seventy dollars, and when the bitch brought me back that seventy dollars, to me that was seven million. You feel me? Because that was the first time I got some money in my pocket. I didn't sell no dope. I ain't rob a nigga. I ain't work for it. I mean, I worked for it with some game, so I took I took on to that, and I, I ran off to the pivot. I ran full throttle with the pivot shit. So, boom, I'm with the pivot shit. I got me a driver right now. I got a, a driver. He drives yellow cab. He's picking me up. Woo woo. I'm going around. I got his driver's license. I'm using that as a uh, as ID. He's an African nigga. He ended up turning pivot two after that. Oh some shit. This shit contagious. So now I'm driving around, I'm using it, I'm feeling good. I'm like, I ain't gotta worry, as long as I got this license, I'm good. They pull me, so I'm gonna get back to the island right now. I'm telling you how I got back to the island. They pull me over, nigga, license suspended. So now I'm trying to tell the cop, just let me go, I'll leave the car. I, 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 I'm trying to tell him, like, boom, he like, oh, now we gotta take you in. And that, it was meant for me to get locked up that day because about 30 minutes before that, I was driving on, in the Bronx on Tremont. I would pick the bitches down, went to Hunts Point, drop the bitches down. I'm blasting the music. I had a, a old school Lincoln, long, long, long Lincoln, long joint. Pull that shit a banana boat. And I had a bitch in the car with me, a white bitch. I had two bitches, two black bitches and one white bitch. A white bitch had a black eye. Boom, I'm driving Henny, big drinking Henny, big feeling myself. A cop with a station wagon pulls up next to me, big music. I put the music down. He pulls me over. When he pulls me over, he's looking, but I still got the young face, so he's not really thinking like this nigga's really doing that. He like, what's going on? So I, right on the spot, I said, yeah, this is my girlfriend, this is her friend. Uh, she got beat up by her boyfriend, she got the black eye, and that's why I came to get her. Me, I got a habit, when I drive, I don't drive with no shoes on. If I got shoes, I take them off, and I, I drive with slippers. So when I came out the car barefooted, or with socks on, he was kind of like, I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to help her out. I was in bed laying down, I was drinking, I just came to help her. He grabs the bottle of Hennessy, pours the shit out, 
I said, yo, go the fuck home. My dumb ass goes to 240 for some white planes and put the bitches down on the track. That's how I got locked up. So now I get locked up. I'm going back on the island. Now I'm comfortable now. What so you mean that's how you home. got locked up? What you mean? Like you went up there and then another cop ran down on you? They, they pulled me over. I was driving up a one-way street. I, like, bro, with the people shit, niggas is talking to bitches, rolling the windows down. We screaming out, bitch, I, I, you know what I mean? Emperor Caesar, you mean, please believe it, I mean? You feel me? Yeah, we going Yo, I used to live right country. there, bro. I used to live on 243rd between White Plains and Barnes. That shit was out of control with prostitutes Nigga, out there. What year? You might have seen me. I was out there. I had the Jaguar, I had the Cadillac, I had the Lincoln. I was out there. Mount Vernon right there. Yep, I, it's the borderline of Mount Vernon. I used to live on Barnes, matter of fact. Yeah, so. But that shit was out of control over there, man. Yeah, I had to shit. get from over there for real, for real. That shit was lovely. I was loving it over there. I ain't gonna lie. I was running, I was running the muck. By that time, I had a little more experience on it. I'm fucking with some older peas. My name's kind of ringing. So when I went over there, I found that track by accident. Before my nigga pop shit, he rapping shit. He fuck with uh um with uh with uh Jim Jones. Fuck with the dips. He a Harlem nigga. You feel me? So I don't want to deviate from that. Cause that's a whole different. Yeah, I, I, I was into that life. So I'm gonna get back to the right island joint. I get booked, I go to the island. When I went to the island the first time, I was selling dope. I ain't had no shit. I'm, you feel me? I'm over here moving and shaking for whatever I can have. This time I went to the island, I got bitches now. So my books is full. I got store now. I'm doing two for ones, three for ones if you a square. If you the homie, give me one back. If you're a regular 550, two for ones. I'm feeling all right. I got the same little bitch that I turned out that the bigger Jimmy Smack. She's coming to the island. She's bringing me packages of uh, the tops. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know the tops. She bringing that shit in. She passing the shit off to the nigga that, uh, I don't want to put it out there just in case they're still doing that play. But I was getting the shit brought in. So I'm comfortable. I'm feeling myself. I'm, I got a nigga that clean my dishes. After I eat, give the nigga a rollie. I'm, I'm rolling it though. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm fucking, uh, what's the nigga from America against Frank Lucas? I'm feeling good right now. So I'm comfortable and shit in the island. And, uh, yeah, not to DV, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get back to, uh, the crazy story, but I'm gonna tell you one quick shit that happened on the island. At this time, uh, you know the captains walk around 10 o'clock every night. Mm -hmm. So boom, I'm in the cell side at the time. Captain, captain never walked this night. I'm like, damn. I got a, uh, I got a little joint. I got weed in here now. I'm like, shit, he ain't never come through. I'm like, I'll be good. I'm rolling up the tissue paper, put deodorant on it, light that up as an incense. I'm like, all right, cool. I wait, wait, wait. 10:30 never happened. Boom. So I, I light up the smoke. Nigga, we locked down the race. Some niggas in the cell, like, yo, 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 bleep, yo, you making that eyes? Like, nigga, chill, we good. I'm smoking, whole tear lit up. I hear the gate open, captain walk. Boom, captain walking. I'm ready to piss in my pants. So now what I do is that I, I, I hear him, because I'm all the way, I done booked the nigga for the cell, so I got the cell all the way in the back and you're going up the theater. So while the, while the um, captain getting ready to walk down, lighting mad uh, deodorant and shit, I grab a, a, a Muslim carpet, I put the shit on the floor, and I get down like I'm praying. You feel me? I lay down like I'm praying. I, I see the flashlight go by me and it stop like you smell it. I know you smell it. Ain't no way you don't smell it. Put the flashlight, I'm, I'm faking like I'm praying and I see the flashlight going over my head. Boom, 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 we leave. Next morning, by six, seven in the morning, waterfall. You know, waterfall, the search come in. My strategy with the waterfall, because I had a lot of store, I fucked my room up. I fucked my room. I fucked my whole cell up. I'm, I'm throwing shit around. I'm shit messy, because you know, the CL, that's what they coming to do anyway. So I got this shit messy. I got couches in the rice bag, cracking a little bit, couches of weed, cigarettes, everything, boom, boom. I made it through that search, I'm good. So now I'm comfortable. Some nigga come in the house. This nigga, uh, this is where the shit right here, this is where the shit get critical. This nigga about 350, big, big nigga, about six something, older nigga, but he Haitian. He come in the house, niggas is telling me, oh, he's the man that used to have the cigarettes and shit. So now I'm like, damn, he's gonna try to step on my toes. They're like, nah, the homies whooped him out already. Shot 120, my big homie. He already ran him out. I guess they was extorting him. So now I'm like, all right, cool. In my mind, I know that means that he can't live with me. You feel me? But I'm comfortable. You feel I'm comfortable. And he not coming on no smoke shit. He come to me one day, he hates you. So he talking to me in Crayol, we vibing. And he like, yo, you know, I had some tension with your homies in the other unit. I'm like, yeah, man, that ain't about shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He like, yo, I used to be the man with the, with the project. Like, I know he said, he told me he had a CO bitch bringing him shit. He's like, yo, the homies did me dirty. I'm like, bro, that's nothing. You, you good with me, we ain't on that. So I'm chilling, living life. Nigga come to me about two weeks later after he in the unit with me. He like, yo, you think I can get a couple, uh, couple, uh, 
a couple cigarettes, whatever. So at the time, I'm thinking he just wants some shit to smoke. I get a nigga two fingers. And I give it to him, I see his face kind of like, he look at me kind of awkward like, like, like this. I'm like, yeah, this one I got you like, you ain't got no shit, you ain't got no more. I'm like, what you mean, bro? I'm like, that shit kind of weird What you, like, you know what I mean? It's kind of awkward. He like, no, I'm good. I'm gonna find out, he gonna go flip that. Do my background on nigga, he killed his wife. He used to be a cop in Chicago. He moved out here to New York, he killed his wife. And that's why he, that's the charge he was fighting at the time. So now I'm chilling, boom, he in the unit, you know what I mean? He look like he uncomfortable, but he ain't saying shit to me. I got a couple dojas around. I got a couple of niggas I can send on miss, missions and shit. So I'm comfortable. So now, Shine them 120 classic uh, um, disco. Uh, uh, um, what's the homie name? Uh, uh, FBI, Blink Loud. All these niggas are next door. Admin Sec, they're right next door. So I'm just in my head, like, we ain't never gonna run into each other. They ain't gonna never know he in my house. So you feel me? Even though I was floored for that, personally, let me keep it real with you lads, I'm not trying to tussle with this nigga. I was probably about 175, 180. This nigga was three and change muscle and shit. I'm not trying to get choked out. This nigga killed his wife. He's gonna kill me on these cells. So I'm trying to keep it at peace. And if it got to, you feel me? I'm gonna try to make a movie on him and have him rolled up. I'm not trying to go blow for blow with this nigga. This nigga cause I, ain't, I ain't want that. I'm comfortable. I'm living good. You feel me? Niggas might say some bitch shit. I don't think it was some bitch shit. I think it was playing the smart. You feel me? So now he in the house. We randomly, they fuck up one day. They let Admin Seg out. When we going out, 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 the, um, out the yard, they coming in, we going out, so it happens. So now we walking by, you know how they got the lines, we got two two units walking by each other, right? Mm-hmm. So, Sean was playing, he in the front, I'm in the front, I'm in the front, they pass me, they going down. They see, oh boy, they pop right off on them in the hallway, boom, 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 boom. About 20 minutes later, when I get to the unit, I get a kite still under my door, and he gets a kite to me, he's like, yo, the boy gotta go, he gotta go ASAP. I'm like, all right. Who that? You talking about the dude that killed his wife? Yeah, he like he can't live there. He, he, he's a plate. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm three star general for this shit. He's a plate. One thing I can say about Shaw with twenty, and, and and right now I think about it, it was crazy. But the nigga told me straight up when he gave me my papers on my office shit, he said, "Yo, blood, if you don't know your office shit, I'll personally eat your food." Right, my right in front of me, he told me that. He told me, and I mean, I didn't take it as no pussy. This shit, I took it as nigga, this for real. We doing this shit like this how we moving. All right, cool. So I knew that when it came to, to, to stipulations on the shit, if you going, you rain with the red, and you moving, you moving. So now I get back to the unit. I got the kites under the door. The homie's like, yo, boom. I got a couple of those and niggas like, yo, what you going to do? I'm like, yo, nigga got to leave, bro. I can't single single work like this. So now I go on myself. I pull out my I pull out my little banging shit. I had the little, little, little gym star shit. I had the shit glued on, taped up. And this is the moment where I realized I could have got killed. Nigga could have murdered me easily, and I didn't know. Boom, I got the blade shit. I put the shit in my cell. I got a single cell. I put the shit on my shelf, and I'm in the room, like, you feel me? Writing my, uh, my little letter shit, getting my shit together, boom, boom, boom. He walked to the cell. He come in the cell. He said, he walked in, he said, yo, bro, yo, I already know. He said, with the homies. And I, he, when he talking to me, he look on the side, and he see the thing on the table. He got me straight up if he wants to. Like I said, the cells ain't that big. He can overpower me. He rush me. They can go ham on me. Kick back toe, he can go crazy, connect on my face, anything, slip my throat, whatever. He looked at it and he looked at me and he go, oh, word is like that? I'm like, bro, you know, you can't stay here. You know what I mean? He looked at me again, he looked at the thing. I'm like, sick, about to grab it. He, he spent off. When he spent off, I'm like, all right, it's a whole different ball game now. Boom, I wrapped the shit up, tied the shit up, boom, put the shit in my front, my front pants, wrapped the shit up in my, in my boxes. I'm going to the phone. I'm going to call my bitch, let her know I'm about to go to the hole. If anything, woo woo, let her know what's going on, give it a prelude. So now I get on the phone, talking on the phone. The nigga's cell is right by the phone, he in the front cell. I walk by his cell, his shit packed up. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, he just gonna do a roll up move. Nah, hell now. Nah. When I get on the phone, I'm talking, he walked by and he tried to sneak me. When he tried to sneak me, he missed and hit the wall. I'm on the phone. Boom. We getting down. The only advantage that I had, and I think about it now, was the fact that he was so wide that he's swinging, but I'm so small and compact, I'm in between, so I'm swinging straight forward. So if I'm swinging him six times, it's taking him two, three times, so it's six, three, you know what I mean? So it looks like I'm doing all right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I guess at some point, the nigga realized, like, you feel me? I can't get to no banger right now, but we, we, we in the middle of the tussle. I'm not reaching the shit. This nigga trying to overpower me. At some point, I guess he realized 
I'm not going hand blow for blow with this nigga. He grabbed me straight up from the, from the chest, from the shirt, picked me up and slammed me. When he slammed me, I guess he tried to like get over me. I guess the homies jumped in like, but them niggas that was in there, now I realized they was on some bitch niggas. They didn't pop off. They was on some trying to stop the fight. Like, yo, chill, chill, chill. See yo coming in, oh, get the pin. She come out with the mace. Boom, she hit the mace up. I, I, I got the bang, I passed it to the homie. And uh, you feel me? I mean, we went to the hole, and they kept telling me in the hole, like, I'm gonna kill you. When I see you, I'm gonna kill you. I get to the hole, so I'm feeling like the man now, I put a plate. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where that, that 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 episode went. Uh, the Rikers, man, you feel me? And uh, after that, I was kind of out of state right there. I was I was good, I took my plate, I handled my business. You feel me? I ain't eat the nigga, eat the nigga food, because I couldn't get to it. But if I had a chance to, I damn sure would've made a movie on it. Because I was prepared to go to the hole, my shit was packed up, I wrote letters out, I did my play. Yeah, that was the crazy wild shit, man. You know what I mean? And uh, they, had, they had some real stand-up niggas here that was doing this shit. When niggas talk about shit like niggas like Disco, he was he was having his way on the island. You feel me? Nigga Bling Blau, he was having his way on the island. You feel me? Me and Bling Blau went to the hole before. You feel me? I seen a nigga grab a, a police bitch titty. And the bitch turned around, and I, I turned blue in the face. like. And the bitch turned around and looked at him and said, you better watch yourself, and walked out. I said, oh, yeah, niggas is having their way in it. You feel me? So yeah, that was just one episode though, man. But yeah, bro, that's kind of that's kind of how that shit went though, man. Just wanted to put light on it. And I'm not promoting no street shit right now. I live on the golf course in Florida right now. I'm driving the vans. I'm working. I'm good right now. I ain't really into no thing. I still fuck with the homies. You feel me? I ain't no gang banger. You know what I mean? I still support my members. You feel me? But uh, you know what I mean? I'm worried about you know what I mean getting better. I'm doing good right now. Paying taxes. And I'm alright, man. If you need promo, text the number now. You heard? Get seen by thousands of people.